time and forward or to stay stuck in the now. Digital somehow has opened up um, our awareness for that linear time, analog time we might say, but that's a lie. Um, oh, let's say it's a fake concept, analog time. That digital is opening up the borders that used to be um, severely uh, um, outlined between the past, the present and the future. And effectively, cinema was the first order to be dissolved into digital, whereas we might by now conclude that gaming is in fact a new cinema, and gaming does propose a moving back uh, in time, but also in scenarios, or moving forward, and to have a bio biological link with duration. So, that first concept, which is the search for materiality and time, of course, is broader than just um, the problem of duration. Um, it goes deeper, and it goes, I would compare it to a transition. Imagine the doctor says tomorrow that you have a problem with your vision and you will go blind. You have three months. And the question is, what will you do first? Back in the 90s, I remember uh, this rather kitschy movie, The Five Senses, about somebody who's effectively being announced that he will go blind and goes out in the world and tries to touch as much as possible, tries to speak, but basically speaks to his own memory. And while he's alive still, and whilst he still has a vision, um, He's already, from that moment on, when he's declared that we'll have no more vision, he's, he's in the past. And he's trying to reformulate what materiality meant in his past. And I claim that vision in the future, when it has radically dissolved into the asset of the digital, is a vis vision without optics. And without photography, naturally, without cinema, based on a lens, um, but also probably, and I have no scientific claim about this, but I think ideologically I can expect it, probably even without the use of our own eyes. Which leads me to deduce that, and I really sorry, I'm really sorry if I'm making big leaps uh, theoretically now, which makes me to deduce from there that it is theoretically again possible that we see without our eyes. And I've been led to certain assumptions by working, um, as Bernard first uh, suggested, with the more complex works, such as travel. When my own world started to dissolve into a world of uh, coding and um, uh, geometrical, uh, lines uh, colored in by textures and then being lit up by an artificial light, etc. When working in 3D, I started realizing that our optical world <coughs> is probably finite. And <coughs> it's a bit tough to outline where it goes to or maybe where it regresses to but I think it regresses to, or it goes to, um, um, re-empowerment of ideology and of the word. In favor or in disfavor of um, photography, among others, which was, one could say, a short-lived anarchy of vision which allowed for about 180 years, um, at least conceptually, it allowed an apparatus to stand in our way of our own perception and the world out there. And that apparatus had an incredible function in the sense that this lens was actually as always a sign of light and of hope by its nature, by the way it was worked. It let in light, um, 
but also because it needed light to record something, it was structurally a uh, technology of hope. The new technology, which is that of scanning, is a, uh, an ideology of avoidance. It does not look, but it feels around it and it tries to feel whether it will hurt itself or someone else. It's a completely different approach. Um, and it also doesn't allow anymore for the concept of photography as this thing that, without worries, is able to record what is out there and is a witness which is beyond, um, beyond doubt, has this authority, autonomous authority of the event. Now, so that's my... I have to watch out that my hour is not over and I haven't gotten to my second concept. Um, so materiality and time is the first and primordial worry.